Hello, my name is Lorraine Burkett. I am a faculty member at the University of Vermont and coordinator of the Organica Project. The following presentation is from the Organic Apple Production Session held at the New England Vegetable and Fruit Conference in Manchester, New Hampshire on December 15, 2011. The session at the conference covered organic apple research results and insights from the Organica Project. My presentation will give a general overview of the Organica project. You will also find on the Organica website more specific presentations on horticultural, IPM, and ground cover management issues and results. The overview will be divided into two parts. This is part one. The Organica project is supported by a major grant from the USDA Organic Research and Extension Initiative. The project's official title is Using New Alternatives to Enhance Adoption of Organic Apple Production Through Integrated Research and Extension. This is a mouthful, so we refer to the project as the Organic Apple Project or the Organica Project for short. The project started in 2006. Basically, we are, ha we are taking a, look, a new look at the potential opportunities and challenges of organic apple production in New England. Although there is significant interest in organic apple production in the region, there are very few certified organic orchards, in part because of disease challenges associated with Macintosh, the predominant cultivar grown in the region. However, recent shifts in consumer preference for newer or different cultivars have led, led to the planting of different apple cultivars that have different disease susceptibility. Thus, the basic rationale for the project was to determine the opportunities for organic apple production in orchards that are incorporating new or different apple cultivars and examine these opportunities within two major production systems growers are using to switch to new or different cultivars. Planting a new orchard with young trees purchased from a nursery or top grafting an established older orchard to new cultivars. The project was developed with input from growers from the region. We asked which cultivars are you planting and which are important for the future of the industry. And from this list, the cultivars Honeycrisp, Ginger Gold, McAllen, Liberty, and Zestar were selected. These are the cultivars we are studying in the two orchard systems. Just as a side note, the apples pictured in this slide are organically certified Zestar apples harvested from the project in 2011. Before I get into some of the details on how the project was set up, I would like to acknowledge the members of the Organica team. Members of the team include faculty and technical staff at the Universities of Vermont, Maine, and Arkansas. The individuals listed here represent the disciplines of pomology, plant pathology, entomology, soil health and management, ag economics, and organic farmly, farming. Not listed on the slide are the many growers who provide guidance and insight to the project, including members of, the, uh, of our advisory panel. The Organica project would not be possible without funding from the USDA, not only the organic program, but also other agencies, and from the various universities involved in the project, and from other growers. We very much appreciate your support. There have been some major constraints to organic apple production in New England. We have apple cultivars, such as Macintosh, that are very susceptible to apple scab, and our wet summers are very favorable for infection and disease development. Also, there are some arthropod challenges, for example, plum curculium management. Up until a few years ago, just before we started the project in 2006, organic options for management of this, disease, this insect were very limited. Reliable thinning materials in organic production are also very limited. In order to obtain a consistent crop, both in quantity and size, a recommended practice is to thin the crop so the trees don't get into a biennial bearing cycle. And in organic orchards, this is a challenge to manage. These have been some of the major constraints in organic outward production, and in the Organica project, we wanted to see if these remain constraints and whether there are economically viable options that can be used in the two production systems growers are using to establish new or different uh, orchards and with the five cultivars mentioned. 
We started the orchard research in 2006 when we planted what we designated as Orchard 1 with nursery trees and top grafted another orchard which we designated as Orchard 2 to Honeycrisp, Ginger Gold, Macallan, Liberty, and Zestar. Both orchards have these five cultivars. In Orchard 1, the rootstock is Bud 9 except for Honeycrisp which is on M26. In Orchard 2, the rootstock is M26. And the inner stem which was the original cultivar of each tree is either Macintosh or Liberty. These two orchards are located at the University of Vermont Horticultural Research Center, commonly, commonly referred to as the Hort Farm. These pictures show how these orchards appeared in 2006. Another orchard at the University of Maine's Highmore Farm is also part of the project and is involved in ground cover and weed management research. This part of the research was started in 2009 and Dr. Renee Moran will be discussing the main research orchard in another presentation. There have been two phases of the project to date. Phase 1 was from 2006 to 2009 which basically co covered the orchard establishment years in each of the two orchards. We received organic certification in 2008. We are currently in phase 2 the early bearing years of the orchards. The current objectives of the project are listed in this slide. In other words, these are the official objectives of phase two of the long-term project. Objective one, we are continuing to evaluate the five cultivars during the early bearing years in orchard one and two. We collect a lot of data to evaluate the economics of the five cultivars within the two orchard production systems to determine sustainability and profitability. A second objective was to evaluate kelp extract biostimulants and uh, determine if they had an impact on fruit yield, quality, tree nutrition, health, including impact on disease and arthropod pests. And there was a third objective, research objective, which was, which was and is to evaluate the benefits of different ground cover strategies in mo promoting tree health, plant and soil water status, and yield and fruit quality. This is the research that is being conducted in Maine. There's also an outreach extension component to the project, which I will talk about at the end of the presentation. To give you some of the details of how the orchards are set up, I have a few slides. These will give you the background information so the following speakers can jump more quickly into specific research results. In Orchard 1, there are 240 trees. These trees are planted in eight rows at a spacing of 5 feet by 15 feet. As I mentioned, there are five cultivars, Ginger Gold, Honeycrisp, Liberty, Macallan, and Zestar. There are 16 replications of each tree. Each replication consists of a of three trees planted next to each other. All the cultivars except Honeycrisp are on bud 9. Honeycrisp is on M26. Trees are being trained using a vertical axe system. Because we have to run statistics on the data, the orchard was planted using a completely random, random experimental design. The pattern of, the, of where the cultivars are in the orchard can be seen in this next slide. This is the map of Orchard 1. It's color-coded. It indicates the location of the various three tree replications of each cultivar. Each box represents a tree. This, now, this is not how a grower would plant an orchard, but to do replicated research, we have to use an experimental design. Ginger Gold is in yellow, Honeycrisp white, Liberty orange, Macallan blue, and Zestar pink. Some trees have died, but not many. Um, the black boxes indicate where trees have died. We did have a, a problem with a weed badger uh, we are using and it can easily take out a tree and that's what the cause of, of these trees, uh, the trees deaths were. In this slide you can see Orchard 1 as it appeared in 2011. We've had, had challenges in this or organic orchard. The trees have not filled out their spaces as we expected. They have showed poorer growth than what we had expected. Potential reasons for this include the rootstocks, rootstock bud 9 may not be well matched to this specific site. The soil is a Windsor loamy sand and it, it's a very sandy soil. Weed management posed difficulties during the initial years. 
There may have been um, possible root damage caused by the use of a weed badger. Weeds competed with the trees in the first year to two years before we established the mulch strips. Water stress may have impacted their development. The orchard is irrigated and there's mulch underneath the trees, but the site is sandy, as I mentioned, and the trees might be water stressed at times. You can see the irrigation line. That's about 18 inches up from the soil surface. In, addi in addition, the organically approved fungicides we are using in this orchard, sulfur and lime sulfur, are known to negatively impact photosynthesis. This may be a factor in the less than expected growth in the orchard. And the trees have had high phytophagous mite populations, initially two spotted spider mice and then primarily European red mite populations, which may add to stress. Again, um, sulfur, um, one of the materials used in the block for disease management, can flare mite populations. Because of the lack of growth that uh, we were seeing in Orchard One, in 2009, we started new research to address some of these potential reasons for this lack of growth. Uh, Dr. Rene Moran, a member of the Organica team at the University of Maine, started weed management trials in Maine comparing an organic herbicide with mowing and wood chip mulch and she will be reporting on these results. Terry Bradshaw, another member of the Organica team, completed a master's thesis looking to see if applying kelp extract products, which are considered biostimulants, would have a positive impact on growth and other factors. Some of what he found will be presented by Dr. Garcia and in Terry's presentation. This is the end of part one. Please continue to part two for the rest of the presentation on the Organica project, research objectives and overview. Thank you.